I want to talk a little bit about the conservation of mechanical energy. So in this case, we're going to be talking about me I is me F or as our current textbook puts it, EI is EF. But I don't like this as much. I really prefer the sound of me I is me F. So I want you to consider Newton and an enormous battery the size of his head. He throws up the battery. Watch him. Here it goes. Yeah! And he throws it and it goes up and it comes back down and it hits him in the head. Boom. I want to know how high the battery went. How high does a battery go if V naught is 12 meters per second? You could do this using kinematics. That's fine, but we want to use it using the conservation of energy because, in fact, this will give us a lot more power. We're not going to have to worry about time, etc., if we use uh, the conservation of mechanical energy. So the way to do this is to write the statement, me I is me F. We are assuming what? There's no what? Right, good. So the mechanical energy initially, let's see, initially the battery is down here and we're going to call this H initial and then finally the battery is up at the top of its path and we're going to call that H final. And we could write some forms of energy that the battery may have initially. I've got M times G times HI, plus the battery may be moving initially, one half MVI. Let's see, instead of I's, I'm going to put naughts. That'll be nice, huh? This is not there anymore. H naught, one half MV at V naught squared. Finally, it could have those same types of energy, but instead I'm going to write finals instead of naughts. MGH final plus one half m v final square. Let's identify some things that are zero. I think that when the battery reaches the top of its peak, its final velocity will be zero. All right, so we don't need to write that again. Another thing that might be useful is to call this initial height, I mean h naught, we could call h naught zero because we get to choose what height is zero and it will make the problem easier if we call this zero. So let's circle that and call it zero and rewrite the problem as we have it. It is one half m v naught square is m times g times h final. Notice I didn't give you the mass of the battery. You don't need to panic. Masses cancel. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we're going to solve this equation for what we're trying to find, which is how high does the battery go? That would be h final. So I'm going to divide by g. It says here h final is equal to v naught square over 2 times g. There we go. And so we can calculate that. Let us get our trusty calculator out and we'll take the initial velocity and square it and divide by open parentheses 2 times 9.81 meters per second square and I get 7.34 meters. That is 7.3 meters up. Now the next question I might want to ask, and this would be a fair question to ask, is how fast is the battery going halfway up. And I guess I could say that halfway up, let's see, I'm going to say that height final in this case is halfway up. I'm going to take this and divide by two. I'll carry around a few more digits for you. This is 3.6697 meters. So <clears throat> we know if the battery starts down here before Newton throws it, then it will ultimately reach up here. But I'm interested in the battery right here. This is the final. Do you want to make a guess? Do you guys think it's going half as fast as it was at the beginning? I don't like that because there's something more interesting going on here. So let's say we're going to call this the final location and we're going to call this the initial location. So we've got H naught here and H F here, and we know H naught and H F, and we also know V naught. So let's plug in what we know. We're going to say me I 
is me f. Oh, that's why I keep writing i's because me i's me f sounds so good. Okay, so we've got m times g times h naught plus one half m v naught score is equal to m times g times h final plus one half m times v final score. Is it true that v final is zero again? Check it. Nope, still going up right there, so we're gonna need to keep this. Also, the final height is not zero. One of these two things is zero, though. The initial height, yeah, let's set it up as zero to make that a little bit simpler again. Equals zero. So now I will take <coughs> this equation. Notice all the m's? Let's cancel them right now. Boom, boom, boom. Mass of the object doesn't matter. That's the hint that we can go back to kinematics. When the mass cancels out, kinematics is a valid place for us to be. We don't have to worry about accelerations being different for different masses. But since the masses cancel out, all the accelerations will be the same. They'll just be baby G. We're trying to find what here? How fast? How fast is V final? So I'm gonna multiply by two. I'll get V naught square is two G H final plus V final squared. Now I'm gonna subtract this term right here. V naught square minus two G H final is equal to V final square. And now I'm going to screw both sides. V naught square minus two G H final screwed equals V final. So what this is saying is the final velocity is less than the initial velocity by this amount inside that screw. Very interesting. Let's figure out how fast it is. Now remember, you don't think that it's six meters per second. Six meters per second would be half of V naught. Do you think it's more than six meters per second or less than six meters per second? Let's do it. Here we go. We're gonna take the screw of, we're gonna do 12 meters per second squared and then we're going to subtract two times baby G, 9.81. And then I'm also going to subtract, uh, let's see, what am I multiplying in here? I'm subtracting the multiplication with 3.6697. And oh dang, it looks like it's going 8.48. 8.485 meters per second. If we're gonna do significant figures, if you're watching for a physics A class, 8.5 meters per second is how fast it's going. So it's going significantly more than half the speed initially. Does this make sense that halfway up it we're going more than half the initial speed? I think it does. Why don't you compare the time that it takes to get from the initial launch up to halfway to the time that it takes to get from halfway, we could call this time one, the time that it takes to get from halfway to the top is gonna to be time two. Interesting, so these distances are the same. This distance is the same as that distance. These times are not the same though because the average velocity is bigger when. Average velocity is bigger when it's going faster, that's closer to the initial launch, and the average velocity is small up her. So that makes sense that this time will be a lot longer because it's going slower on average and that explains why the velocity right here at the middle is more than half the velocity at the launch. Questions? Put them in the comments.